UBC Inspiring Uganda The Johnny program on UBC TV Good evening viewers and also good evening listeners. I know my people with disabilities who are visually impaired will be listening to this program and I want to inform the viewers that today we are on a program called The Journey under Uganda Broadcasting Corporation TV and today I'm going to tell you about myself. I want to start by saying my name is Asabo Helen Grace. I am a member of parliament representing people with disabilities and also by God's grace, I am the Minister for Persons with Disabilities in the current government. I want to start by giving a brief background about myself. I started my journey as a young girl in Teso. And I went to school. I became a teacher. And that's my profession. So I taught for some years. And then I joined politics in 2011. So from 2011 up to now, I am a current member of parliament and I want to thank my voters for giving me this opportunity to take that leadership role and I want to pray that together we shall achieve the heights that brings in disability inclusion. In this current term of 2021 to 2026, I was blessed that among the five members of parliament, I was given the leadership of being a minister and the only minister for disability in the current government. And I want to thank His Excellency for that appointment. We don't take it for granted. And I know that we shall all be moving together. I want to start by saying, where did I start my journey as a leader? I started it from school. At a certain point when I was in the TTC, I was a head girl. And little did I know that it will bring me to higher levels. I have been in the Women Council leadership. And for the last 17 or 18 years, I've been in the National Women Council Executive where we have been guiding the issues of women of Uganda. And when I talk about the women of Uganda, not NRM women, I am talking of all the women of Uganda because that is a, a platform where women are groomed to leadership positions. So I have been in a member of that leadership. I also want to say that I have been a chairperson of a university council, that is the International University of East Africa, and in the University Council, we are in charge of policy development. I was a deputy director in the National Union of Disabled Persons of Uganda. And I was also in charge of head of program of all the programs in that organization. The National Union and is one of the institutions that groomed me to be a leader within the disability sector. I also want to recognize that I was also in the National Council of Higher Education as one of the leaders there in the council and again I will thank the Minister of Education for having given me that opportunity to serve in that position. So I have been in many sectors of leadership and I want to say that I will not be able to mention all of them. Fawe, Uganda, that's Forum for Women Education. So I was a board member there also for about three to four years and I think those are some of the things that we did. But because of time, allow me to tell you about my achievements. What have we done as a member of parliament. I want to say the other leadership portion I held was I started an organization for women with disabilities, National Union of Women with Disabilities. And the reason we started that association is that the women with disabilities, like any other woman in Uganda, were not recognized within the disability movement. When the people would call a general assembly, you'd find men. So I said, but where are the women? So we started getting an association for women with disabilities separate. And this association was particularly to support and build the capacity of women with disabilities to be able to come to leadership. And as I talk today, we have a number of women with disabilities who have come up. What achievements have we got as a disability movement? One, politically, as Uganda, we have made sure that we have representation right from the village up to the national level and at the level of cabinet now. Meaning that at every village, there's a person with disability. 
and at every parish there's a person with disability at a sub county then we have the gender man and a woman and then at a district a man and a woman and that is for the whole country so you can then calculate how many disabled people are in positions that's a very big up achievement and i want to thank the nrm government for giving us that position we have also been able to advocate we started this from nudipu that we sit in statutory organizations and i want to say Uganda Communication Commission, where UBC is based, we have a representative of a disabled person. We have a disabled person in the National Council of Higher Education. Almost all the instruments have us as representatives. So it means we have been recognized in anything that government starts. And as MPs, we fought for this. And part of the struggle was to ensure that we fill the positions of persons with disabilities in all these positions. And I want to say that I have been part of the journey of seeing the emancipation of people with disabilities and government has been very well and very cooperative that right from the laws we are advocated for ourselves to be in the constitution of Uganda. We have an act for people with disabilities 2020. We also have policies on people with disabilities and nationally and internationally Uganda has been recognized as one of the best countries that bring in people with disabilities. So all this struggle together with our partner Nudipo has been the struggle that we have been doing and that has been at a level of a member of parliament. But I want as a minister we have also done something. Government has been positive. One by appointing a minister specific for disability means that government is interested to understand how do we do inclusion. Inclusion is not that people don't know, don't want to help you, but that they don't know what to do with you. So my role now as a minister of disability is to coordinate with other ministries to bring in issues of disability. For example, when you go to the Ministry of Education, you'll get what they call special needs education department. When you go to the Ministry of Health, there's a department for special health issues on persons with disabilities. When you go to, 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 to NPA, we're also advocating for issues of disability and they have come up with guidelines. And this big program we have now, the PDM, because of sitting in cabinet, we're able to access 10% of the money that is going to the districts, is going to, to the parishes, the 10 million is going to be for people with disabilities. So 10 million times 10,700 parishes. You can calculate and get to know that we have, if this money is served well as per policy, you will be having about 100 billion going to people with disabilities. That's the biggest fund that ever people with disabilities could have got in their lifestyle. So I want to thank government again for this PDM, but we still have challenges that our chiefs, the parish development committees are not recognizing to bring disabled people to benefit from this money. But we are saying, if you can give them their 10 million and we have 10 households getting this money, there will be a change and we'll have raised these people from poverty and be able to have some household income. So my prayer is that this one comes on. Also as a minister, we have been able to support the issue of the policy for people with disabilities, revised it, and now we have a new policy a policy on disability 2022 and this new policy is in line with the new act of 2020 so the new act came in 2020 so when the government came into place we also had to put in a policy that goes with the other thing we have here a special grant government gives us apart from the money for the parish as a minister we have access 16 billion on government and this money is given specifically to the disabled people who form groups between five people to 15 people and when they get this money five million per group they'll give they'll give us what they do in their areas it is really from bottom top and then for us we send the money to the groups and i want to tell you that the disabled people have changed some of them are rearing animals some of them are doing trade some of them are doing uh, businesses that have helped them to raise income in their families because these five million when they get it they multiply it and they are able to to support their families and take their children to school so they are very good stories as far as this grant and again i will thank the president and the cabinet for approving the 16 billion because the 16 billion is specific to only people with disabilities but i also recognize that all other programs are inclusive of people with disabilities. I've talked of the PDM, I've talked of a MIOGA. In a MIOGA, 
every constituency has got 30 million shillings that goes to people with disabilities. This 30 million shillings is specific for a circle of people with disabilities. So if you have 30 million times the number of again constituencies, then you can calculate and get to know how much money government is giving us. I also want to to say that the government in all its planning now as we talk has to be conscious of disability because of the fight the the, the the finance management act it recognizes issues of equity so we try to come on board and see how to help our people recently we discussed is not yet in the open but i know that in the current budget 2024-2025 the ministry of education has revised the cost unit of educating a child with disability. Previously, we were at the same level. Now we are saying a child with disability to educate is a bit expensive. And we have agreed in principle and we are waiting finance to give us support to that area. So if that money is given, the unit cost for a person with disability is going to be higher than the other children that they have been handling in UPE and USE. So you find that our children are going to get better education because of the challenges we have said don't count the population of the disabled, but count the needs. Because the needs, I would use an example of a child who is blind. They don't use an exercise book, but they use what they call braille paper, and there's a machine. And they are not seen in Uganda. So you have to buy them from where? From out, about 3 million, 4 million, a braille machine. No parent can buy that. So that's why government has decided to take that responsibility and buy some of those materials. I also want to say that again as a minister as we move now to issues of census we are saying we need our own census as disabled people to know usually the blockers and say disabled people but you don't know whether these are women these are blind these are deaf these are because if you are going to plan each category has to have a specific planning mechanism so we are calling upon ubos that when they count us let them count us in our categories, we are not homogeneous that you begin saying there are so many disabled people because some of them we are not seeing, we shall call all of them disabled. We are seeing we need to be counted in our sector areas. The blind, how many of them are in Uganda? How many deaf are there? How many women are there? How many people with epilepsy? How many people with albinos? So that government can then know if it's issues of drugs, they then know how to help our what? Our people. The other thing I want some government is that we have removed taxes on what we call the sunscreen for people with albinos because previously it was taken to be a cream. But now we are saying this thing can be taken at the area of supporting people with albin albinism because for them without the cream then they they are prone to cancer and again i want to appreciate that the government has been able to support our people so allow me go to the area of women emancipation we shall all agree whether you don't want museveni or you want him that women emancipation has been improved in this country when we came and if I want to give an history of political emancipation, when the legal started, we are told there was only maybe one woman, and it kept on moving, very few women. But when the NRM government came, women who stood on the basis of standing with the men were very few. So government said, ah, ah let's put affirmative what? Action. And when they put affirmative action, you now realize that every district has got a woman representing it, and currently in the current parliament we have about only 14 who came from the constituents so if there was no affirmative action we'd only have 14 women out of the many men but because government put affirmative action women came up and they were able to fill those positions for me i feel that was a very good step and we are still asking for that affirmative action people think we can stand with the men but because of society people don't believe in us they still think a woman cannot especially i mean even in economic empowerment we are now struggling with a program in this ministry called Grow. We want to empower women to get money. But people are not very comfortable when women have money. I don't know why. But I thought that one increases economy in the country, economy in the family, economy where. But people are not are very scared for women to have money. But we are saying, government has said, no, let's empower our women economically. We used to have a program called WEP. 
it helped the women women a, a entrepreneurship program now we have a program called grow we are going to build capacity on women already have businesses so that they can have value addition on their products they can have, get out of uganda and market their things out and get more empowered economically so that they will also increase on the tax base of uganda but also improving their families but we, when we launched this program i'm already hearing some men are not very comfortable they think women are coming to overtake them and that kind of thing but i think every growth comes with challenges and allow me just tell you some of the challenges of course when you get empowered people think this one thinks she's too big she's a powered who is she and that kind of thing even within the women movement people don't are not very comfortable with women who think they are what empowered the other challenge we see now there's a lot of gender based violence i don't know whether because of sharing property or whatever people are men and women are fighting in families what is the problem but also we realize that as women women or women with disabilities men have also left their responsibility of taking charge of families go to schools and see women who are taking children to school come home the women are the one buying food again the men i think to me there's going to be a challenge and i am one advocate of calling upon government to empower men especially the boy child including my own children because we are getting an empowered society of women who are going to get married to men who are not empowered so there's going to be again an imbalance so we need to come up with programs which are going what to support the people so i think another challenge is of course some people say affirmative action is there but it's like some of us have stayed in the affirmative action we're not opening space to get others also to come on board so there are those also questions but i think that is something that can be discussed in a boardroom and people discuss and said we want the other one and and again as women women are beginning to ask the issue of parity can we have 50 50 for politicians and say one man one woman per district because right now you'll find there's one woman district woman but there are four men so when it comes to a burial this woman is going to move to all these constituencies but the men remain in their small what constituencies so if it is parity why don't we make it one one so that each of us I'm there as a woman representative you are there as a man representative then we can be able to handle the what the assignments of the district at the same level so we feel as women that we are overlooked but i want to thank that for us as disabled people who are special interest groups the disabled the youth the women we have been given those positions and then the elders and in those positions i will tell you for the women representation we are three women against two men the elders also are three women against two i think even the youth so we are moving into taking some of these spaces and nobody stops us because the law accepts us on that so what is the way forward in life i think one thing i want especially disabled people to begin believing in themselves government has done its work it has given us policies it has given us laws for example our act it allows you in case your rights are abused you can go to court and take somebody who's abusing your rights i think we need to move away from what they call inferiority complex and begin building confidence and show people that you are you are what you are disability will not leave you but you have to continue struggling and moving forward whether it is in a women's fora or it is a combined fora let women with disabilities come out and tell people their potential god has left you with some of these what potentials so at this juncture i want to appeal to the government uh, institutions our stakeholders those ones who are running programs of government and even in ngos please always remember to include people with disabilities because without including us then you are leaving a certain population behind and automatically they will become a burden to the country so whatever you do inclusion is no longer an argument even the sdgs really command us to do inclusion so i think they should be able to include our people and we want to fight poverty i want to to echo here the program of the president wealth creation at household i have a wish all of us hear that message and do household income which will improve of course us as ugandans can i take this opportunity now to thank first of all is excellence the president of uganda the cabinet of uganda 
the Madam Speaker and the Parliament of Uganda because they are very good allies in supporting us in the issues of inclusion. And I want to thank the stakeholders at the districts who help us to mobilize our people on any government program. We really want to appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. But I also want to thank the disabled people who are participating in most of these programs. Let us continue with the fight of emancipation. Let us continue fighting with inclusion programs. Let us not there. We are the people who have been given space. Let's show people that we have potential. So I want really to thank the disability movement, whoever is struggling to ensure that we have better life. I want to appreciate your work. And I want to call upon my friends who are fighting for emancipation. Please don't leave us behind. We are also with you together. But of course, I will thank my friends from UBC for coming and giving me this opportunity to record this program. But before I end, I want to say the Women's Day will be based in Katakui district. And I want to take the opportunity to welcome everybody to come for Women's Day in Katakui, a district where the vice president comes. You come in there and we shall welcome you in the Ateso way. So everybody is most welcome. His Excellency will be the guest of honor. I'm very sure because he has never let the women down. Let us come and see the wonders of Teso region. I want also to, to inform the public that the theme of the Women's Day that will be celebrated in Katakui is accelerating gender equality through women economic empowerment. Because we all know that government has really given women a lot of empowerment programs. So we think that when people have money, issues of equality begin coming. For example, when we talk about early marriages, this theme relates with that one. A girl who is educated is more empowered to take her personal decisions than one who has not gone to school. And that one who has gone to school because she has been trained and is economically empowered, she can make her decisions. Even how many children will I have, for example, when I'm a woman, I can have two or three or four. But a girl who is not economically empowered will just be producing children whom she cannot even keep. So I think the theme to me is a very good theme that when you're economically empowered, then the issues of accelerating gender equality begin coming. Instead of me sitting at home and waiting for Mr. X to bring food, I can also bring food. And so at the end of the day, when we meet as a family, we are also sharing. But if you stress your husband automatically, I've been told that men die earlier than the women because we burden them. So this theme of economic empowerment to me is a very critical theme and the women have to pick it up. Now allow me to talk to the public. There are issues of disability that sometimes happen. Because of societal norms, some people look at disability as a curse. And they have a lot of challenges of discrimination. Most of our families don't see us as people. They look at us like something else which came, which is run, which fell in the house. But I've told them that please begin looking at these children. Government has done its part. It has put policies, it has put programs, get a disabled child and take this child to school and let this child benefit from government programs. I wouldn't be a minister. If I didn't go to school, if my parents had thrown me out and said, Damulema, stay home, nobody would be looking at me today as a minister. Because when I sit here, I never saw to be a minister for disability. I saw a minister of Uganda. So meaning, at any point I'm delegated, I can do any work in this government, even with my disability. Disability now becomes like a kind of fashion. I don't even take it like, it's not a disease. And then the other one, there are families where our women with disabilities have got married to. Even when you are being engaged, first of all, men don't want to, to see us. They come in the night, they go viral in the morning because people should not identify that it is Mr. X who is entering this house. So most of them say, ah, you know, it's only me. But it's also risky because I might have more than one partner. This one also will come and whisper. The other one is whispering. So I'm going to have one husband who is paying rent. Another one is buying me a kilo of sugar. Another one. So I'm again prone to HIV AIDS. Because nobody wants to come out to say, this is my wife. But when I produce a, a bright child, this man again comes to steal away the child. You put this person in a stressful situation. But we have now reached a stage with government policies and programs that some of us are now getting married and wedded in churches. Just last week, we had somebody getting wedded in Rubanda. The man was disabled, the woman was not. But I'm telling you, people were sympathetic. Why this beautiful girl was for the blind, it was with the disabled man moving on crutches. Love 
is in the hands of the beholder. Love is not in the eyes of other people. We are human beings. We are everybody like anybody. Please, when they marry a woman with disability in your family, some people curse the brother, they curse whatever. But I want to say, I have been in a marriage, I think over 25 years. I have stayed with this man. I have not got those challenges, maybe because I'm empowered, economically empowered, but still people will whisper. But God, in that relationship, I have my six children and I'm very proud. All of them have gone to the university. The last born has just entered the university. Meaning, you can now forget about my disability and look at my children. And when people see my children, they ask, is that your mother? They still don't believe up to this age that those are my children. I don't know where they thought I picked them from, but I, I produced them. So there is a problem that people have this kind of attitude. The other discriminatory area, please people who are organizing public places, we have now a law, including the Building Control Act. You must make your areas accessible. And I want to call upon the disabled people. If you go to a public place that is not accessible, the laws are there, go to court and take anybody who is not allowing you to a public place. Because people build houses with steps, and then they say, oh, we are sorry. But it is not only for a disabled person. Supposing you got an accident, you'll need an accessible venue. So let's have these accessible places there for all of us. And let us ensure that the environment that is good for you, must be good for a person with disability. When we do the environment barriers, we break them, there will be no disability. Because as you enter, I am also entering. So there will be no what? Disability. But I also want to think that, call upon the people who are out there. There are some people who take advantage of our girls with disabilities. Somebody seeing a blind girl, maybe she has a mental challenge, maybe she has whatever. You find a person raping. And these are people who you think are very high class in, pub, in, in the public there. But when you rape such a person, I think you are just, it is you who is really disabled, not the person you have raped. And you rape and put this person in double jeopardy. I am already disabled. Then again, you rape me and I cannot go to hospital. Because when you go to hospital, the first question they ask, because you knew that you already had a problem. Why did you again accept? And yet you did not accept. So I think the public should understand that we are human beings first. We are women first. We are disabled people. We are human beings before we become disabled and be able to treat us like any other person. My call to the public is that let's take advantage of the law. We have many people who are helping us and I want to thank everybody. And I hope that we shall have a better future for God and my country. Thank you for listening. Inspiring Uganda.